Only the manliest of manly men can stand before him. Shonen Oji, here to dig deeper into your favorite anime and manga. And in this One Piece review, we're going to talk about Young Whitebeard in all his handsome glory. So without further ado, let's get into One Piece, chapter 963. So let's just get right into it. Young Whitebeard crew, they look freaking awesome. Now, there were a few things that came to my mind when I first saw this. So I think it's weird that this is like the white beard this is white beard's first time having ever been to Wano. Now I like this is interesting because he was with the Rocks Pirates and we don't know a lot about them or like what they did. We kind of just like know their demise. But Whitebeard should be more or less like fifty years old about this time, based on how he looks and how long ago it is. And like I can understand that he's never been to Wano, but like it's just shocking that never once has he ever been to Wano. You would think like I don't think he's like quite an uh, yeah, he's at least becoming an emperor at this point, but still, you would think he would been to Wano at least once. So that was like an interesting little tidbit. Um there was also a character that I had to look up because I did not remember her. Her name is Whitey Bay. She was or she is a white beard pirate, but I think we only really saw her at Marine Ford. And I actually like that she appears in this shot because Manly men. There are manly, manly, manly men. And if you're watching this, you can count and tell me how many times I say manly men or men or men or man. Because there's going to be a lot of that this video. There were a lot of manly men in this scene with the white beard pirates. So to have at least one woman and not have it be a total sausage fest, for lack of better terms, it was good. It wasn't necessary, but it was good. Because they're all standing there with their bare chests, their hairy chests. Whitebeard's standing there with his long, flowing, luscious, manly man locks. So it was nice to have a lady just standing there. And, like, she's not, like, too, like, feminine. She's, like, a rough, rugged pirate. So it adds to the atmosphere. But while Whitebeard is looking all kinds of handsome with those luscious locks, the Moby Dick is kind of a mess and it's really weird to see the Moby Dick in such a wreck because I don't know it, like when you see it in Marine Ford it gave off like this presence and like it's just so big that like it almost seems indestructible so again I get that like it's supposed to be ridiculously hard just to get to Wano and then to have to go up the waterfall but like Damn, like, everybody has to go through this whole waterfall spiel. And, like, I'm not bored with it, but it's like, it's like a video game. Like, everybody's just starting off at the beach, like, at level one. Like, this is, like, the starter zone. Like, nobody gets off easy, apparently. But the other thing that I really liked was Baby Marco. Now, I get that he's not an actual baby. Like, he's maybe, like, 20. I don't know. I don't know how old he would be at this time. But just look at his face. Like, he's just so darn cute. I, like, there's all these rugged, manly men among men with the bare chests and long, luscious hair. All these manly, manly men. <clears throat> manly men. Losing my voice from all these men. All these rugged men. And you see baby Marco just sitting there, being all cute, being all raring to go, raring to be a pirate. And... They're all like, okay, well, we should probably go scout the area. And baby Marco, he's not, like, obnoxious. He's not, like, a kid. He's not like, yeah, I want to go, I want to go. He's like, I want to go. Like, he's just so well-behaved. And I don't know, it's just, like, funny to see. Because, one, he just, like, looks funny. Like, not, like, stupid funny, but, like, cute funny. He's, like, cartoonish. But it's also fitting of his character, I think. Because we see him... uh before Wano, and he's a good boy looking after Whitebeard's village. So we know that he's a good boy, and we can see him being a good boy, 
raising his hand politely, like, ooh, I want to go, I want to go. And so they're like, oh, I want to go, I want to go. So it's good to see baby Marco. So then we see Odin clash with Whitebeard. And first of all, this is interesting because it looks like Odin is kind of giving Whitebeard like a hard time. So I'm not going to start talking about power scaling and like how strong he is and all that malarkey. But like just to like have an idea, which like you probably could have already estimated by yourself, but just based on this chapter, it seems like, and don't quote me on this because I'm just making a softball prediction here. It seems like Odin, if he can give Whitebeard a hard time, it seems like maybe he's like, not like Yonko level, but like Yonko commander level. So I don't know. It's interesting to like think about how strong Odin is in relation to like everyone else outside of Wano, but can't say for certain. But what I really like about this scene is the whole shtick with Odin has been everywhere he goes, he's a man among men. He's a manly, manly, manly man. And all the scabbards were like instantly drawn with them. They're like instantly like infatuated with them. Like, oh my God, he's so freaking cool. I don't know who he is, but I'm going to follow him for the rest of my life. Yeah. And Odin was like, mm. right? And then we see the scene where it totally gets flipped. We see Odin doesn't even know who they are. He just knows they're pirates. He's like, sweet, I'm going to go pick a fight. Maybe kill one of them. Charges? I like that he knows to go for Whitebeard. Like, he didn't go for Marco. He didn't go for Whitey Bay. He didn't go for um, uh, Jozu. He didn't go for um, the swordsman. No. He went, like, he grabbed the bull by the horns. He went straight for Whitebeard. If that doesn't speak to Odin's character, I don't know what does. Like, he immediately knew who the toughest guy was. But he charges Whitebeard. They clash. They do the little thing. And we see this uh, quote from Odin where he says, Hey, I have no idea who you are, but you guys seem freaking cool. And you're pirates. I'm going to go with you. Yeah. And Whitebeard, like, Odin gives us one of these classic faces where, like, we can guess what Whitebeard's thinking, but we don't know for sure. Whitebeard gives us his face that, like, is kind of like half, like, him trying not to get cut by Odin. But in, like, my reading, it seems like Whitebeard is, like, kind of doing his own version of the face we saw from Odin last week, where he's like, uh, like, um excuse me? Hi. Like, can you buy me breakfast first? Can you buy me dinner first? Like, I don't just go around sailing with everybody. Get to know me first. But again, I think it really speaks well to Odin's character because as I've been saying for weeks now, Odin is not like stuck to his little hometown village and he would never have been the kind of person to be stuck in the palace because he is a free spirit He's a manly man among men. He does not subscribe to common sense. He's a man of adventure. He's a man of piracy, as we can see, because he wants to see the world. He wants to live his life to the fullest. So it makes sense that at a literal call to adventure, even though the Moby Dick like cannot go anywhere right now, he's like, yeah, let's go do it. Let's go be pirates and Whitebeard. Obviously, we know he goes out with Whitebeard, but it's just interesting to see that, like, he has all these friends, he has all these duties, and Odin's just like, nah, I'm gonna go be a pirate for, like, I don't know, like, three years. Two more things I want to talk about before I wrap this up. The first thing, the title of the chapter, Becoming Samurai. I really like where the scabbards go, now that they're all together. I really like that... They have this transformation where they go to rob Yasue and he's like, ugh. He gives them money and he even gives them more money. And they're like, why are you doing this? And he says, you guys are going to follow Odin, right? Well, if you're going to follow Odin, you need to like 
clean up your act because he's going to be the shogun of Wano one day. And if you guys are going to protect him, you can't just be like scumbags. You need to be proper samurai. You need to be able to beat anyone in Wano. You need to be the strongest, best samurai in Wano. And they take it to heart because not only do they like, practice their fighting, but they refine themselves. Um, I like the cute little scene with Kinemon and um, Kiku where they're like practicing their uh, linguistics. And my uh, translation said forsooth, but I'm pretty sure I read another translation. Uh, I think they're trying to say Seisha, which is interesting because there's the whole deal with uh, Kiku saying Seisha. But we see them not only getting stronger, but we see them like refining themselves. And it's an interesting contrast to Odin, which we see because they're all sitting around and they're like talking all proper to Odin. And Odin is like, what the hell? Is, what are you? Why are you guys talking funny? It's interesting to see this contrast. And I don't really think there's a direct message to it. But one thing you could take away is that Odin is just like naturally himself. Like he didn't really have to like work at it. And then right next to that, you have the scabbards who were born... Kind of like, I don't know, like peasants for like a better term. Like they weren't that strong and they didn't really come from a place of greatness. And they followed this great man. And now they all collectively make a decision to become great so that they can be fit for Odin. So I like that they have this uh, transformation and they want to become proper samurai. And finally, the last thing I want to talk about, Orochi. Now, I said in my last few videos, I don't know what he's scheming, but whatever it is, I wouldn't underestimate it. And we see that I was pretty much right. His schemes, he like he's not he's seemingly stupid when we meet him. And I think like that's according to his plan. The whole thing well first I'll talk about the money apparently this is like an ongoing thing where like he's taking money or he's begging for money from odin so he's like trying to trick yasue and all his yasue's like followers yasue obviously doesn't fall for it but like that's like very like dictator like hitler type thinking like we're gonna plant little tiny thoughts one by one like one coin and then two coins and then ten coins like these little tiny thoughts, like these little mind bombs, like, okay, we're going to make everyone hate Odin. And then, and this is like my theory. It's very likely, but I could be totally wrong. It seems like Orochi poisoned Sukiyaki. Because if you watch Jojo, this is like, this is... Orochi is almost exactly like Dio. Dio usurped power using his wits. And you have your patriarch. You have Sukiyaki and Jojo. You had Jojo's dad. But you have your patriarch. And Orochi is usurping that position of power through schemes. And with Dio, we saw that he poisoned him. And... The same thing, they like both had these symptoms of sickness before they found out they were poisoned. So it seems like what's going to happen is we're going to find out that Orochi poisoned Sukiyaki just like Dio poisoned Jojo's dad. And I really like this because some people might say like it's boring, it's unoriginal. But I like it because it's this classic archetype of the usurper, of the person who is not born into power, but usurps their way to a position of power. And it gives the hero, Odin in this case, a case for redemption, a case for like an odyssey almost. And for Odin to like almost be like a literal odyssey because he'll be going on in his ventures and he'll have to come back and yada yada yada. But I'm curious to see what happens with the Whitebeard Adventures and um, 
I'm curious to see like when Roger comes into this and like when Kaido comes into this because now like Orochi's plans seem like they're falling into place but we still have not seen Kaido once yet so I don't know there's still so much that we haven't seen and I'm dying to see the rest of it. And that is it for this chapter review. I know there's a lot more to talk about, but those were the things that I wanted to talk about. Make sure to comment below. Let me know. What did you think of the chapter? And what did you think about what I had to say? If you enjoyed what I had to say, make sure you like the video because it really does help me out. Make sure you subscribe so that you can see my future chapter reviews when they come out. Um, you'll also know when my other videos come out, like... I'm currently working on a Todoroki video for Hero Highlights. Stay posted. Follow me on Twitter because I will update you on the Todoroki video as well as what I'm watching. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you soon.